we, you know, we want to follow this outline for now, okay? For now, when you do the assignments, please follow the outline here. So interpretation of the Bible passage and negative and positive example to let people know there are real Christians who have sinned in this ways. And there are Christians who have overcome these sins and obey God in this ways. And then God's nature and grace that his, his nature is so beautiful in every way. He is loving, He is kind. Now we want to talk about something related to the theme. If the theme is about not lying, God doesn't lie to us. When God says something, it will always come true. So God's nature, He never lies, He never likes liars, and He will always accomplish what He has promised. So that's His nature. And he, would like, he likes people who tell the truth. And the grace of God related to lie is that uh, God's grace, the Holy Spirit will change a person when he became a Christian. When he becomes a Christian, God will change his life so that he doesn't want to lie anymore. And there will be a process of struggling with the sins of lying. But when he grows in the Lord, when he knows that he cannot run away from God, that all the sins will be exposed, will be exposed instantly to God. And God doesn't like that. So when he understands that, then he will be changed. God's grace will change the person so that he will want to tell, lie, uh, tell the truth and bless people with their words. And then God will reward those people who tell the truth and are truthful. And then why do people still don't, still tell lies? Why do Christians still tell lies? Because they want to cover the sins. And some Christians, they want to boast of themselves. And reminder and warning that Satan is the father of the liars. Then they, they are calling Satan the father. And then uh, that God you know, doesn't like a liar. A liar who doesn't repent can go to hell. Even if you know, he, has, he really has saving faith, but he, a lot of his works will be canceled. And how? How to tell the truth? How is by, you know, be believing that God treasure people who tell the truth. So when we tell the truth, God is very happy with us and God will bless us. So this are uh, how we talk about these four points. And then when we talk about God's nature and grace, we've talked about these four points that now these are just suggestions that we can first talk about God's nature and His grace and grace of transference, how we help other people to obey God in that certain way and reward what, how God will reward us. And then also there is a how. Now these are four suggestions, but there can be others. How, for instance here, how to love one another. So remember how God has loved us and appreciate God's love and He has motivated us to love and God has loved us through other people. God has brought people to love us, to help us, and read the Bible and praise God so we have more strength to love people. And then examine ourselves and manage our problem. How, why didn't we love people? What happened? And then when problems arise, when we have hatred for people, when we despise people, and we want to hate them, we want to uh, do something bad to them, then how can we overcome and, and, and uh, change the behavior, and how we can change the behavior? We're going to go to Revelation 2.23. So here is uh, one, last age, one last message we'll talk about today. Here in Revelation 2.23, Jesus said this was one of the letters of Jesus to the seven churches. And all the churches shall know that I am He who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your work. So, God searches the hearts, the minds and hearts of each person. He knows us inside out. He knows our desire. He knows our lust. He knows every thought in our mind. He knows our pretense. Everything. We cannot run away from God. And He will give to each one according to our works. So if we do good works, then God will give us blessings. But if we are wicked, if we tell lies, then God will punish us, discipline us, and He will take away the blessings from us. So this is Revelation 2.23.
Luke 12, 2, For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. So everything that is covered will be revealed. Everything that we try to cover up will be revealed. Now sometimes not at the final judgment. Uh, actually it would not just in the final judgment, but also nowadays many people false that since the crimes are revealed to other people, they think they can cover it up, but they could not. And then 1 Corinthians 4, 9, For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last, as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. Now here Paul talk about that God has displayed us, the apostles, as men condemned to death. Because in the Roman time, when they were condemned to death and crucified, they were crucified as a spectacle to, the, to the, all the people that they will be uh, put on the cross in public. For we have been made spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. Now here Paul talks about in the time of judgment that our whole life will be revealed to angels and to men. Everyone will see our whole life. Now, if Paul has to do that, the apostles have to do that, does God just stop after the apostles? Or does God continue with everyone? According to the Bible, everyone, all our words, all our works, everything we do and say will be revealed to the whole world. So we'll become a spectacle. So we can imagine. It's like now you are sitting under a roof. But one day the roof will be removed and all the people in the world will see what's happening to us. Now at that time of uh, the time of judgment, they will see what is inside of us. They will see the our thoughts, our desires. So all the desires of us will be revealed. And, and then it will go through different parts of our life. So every moment now, we can think of now there's no roof to our, no roof to our house. And actually people are already watching because one day they'll be watching. So it's like now we are exposed to everyone. So we want to think about what we are thinking now, what we are saying now, what we are doing now, how we are sinning or how we are obeying God, they are actually already revealed to God and one day revealed to all people. So all people, all our lives will be exposed. So these three passages tell us that first, that God will search our mind and our hearts. Now this is in interpretation of the passage. Now that is what I want you to do. Explain, explain the words in the, in the text that all the churches shall know, that all the Christians shall know that Jesus is the one who searches the minds and hearts. He will search our hearts and our mind. He will, he will see our hearts and mind. He knows what is inside us, deep inside us. So we want to explain that to people. So we cannot never escape from God. That everything we say or think or do, we cannot escape from God. And He will reward us according to what we do. And there is nothing covered that will not be revealed. So sometimes we tell lies and we think nobody sees that, but actually it will be revealed. Sometimes not, not just at a final judgment, but even today. And we are made a spectacle to the whole world both to angels and to men. So the whole world will see what kind of people we are, what we do. So if we are real Christians, we know that one day we have to face God. We cannot run away from God. We cannot run away from God. I've heard some people comment and say that there are pastors who tell lies, who steal money, who, who tell lies in order to get money. Uh, this is not good. This is not good because God doesn't like us, nothing will stay in our hands and it will be in vain. Everything we do it will be in vain. If we love God and obey God, God will reward us richly. Okay, now uh, the interpretation I already explained, so I'm not going to talk about that. 
Okay, the negative and positive examples of people. I, I think I'll just go through this here so that you look at a passage. So you, you see that I'm following the Bible passage all the way. Okay, the negative and positive examples. That there are people who think that what they think about are inside them. Nobody sees it. That when they tell lies, nobody sees that. Nobody knows that. So they think they can run away from God and run away from people, hide from people. But God knows already that everything God already knows. When God knows that, you know, sometimes God will reveal our sins to other people so that other people will see our sins. So, so there are negative examples. There, there are some people who just, they do things and they think nobody sees them and they actually are in more trouble. And the positive examples are people who know that everything we do is not hidden. So they, everything they do, they will think about what God would think about them. And then they would really uh, manage their life carefully. They would take care of their lives and say, I don't want to sin. I don't want to hide my sins. I know that God sees them. So I want to turn away from my sins. I, I want to walk in holiness so that there is nothing I'm ashamed of. So there are many Christians like that too. But the sad thing is there are more Christians who are weak than Christians who are strong. Okay, and then God's nature. First, God's nature is He's all-knowing. So related to this, you, you, you know, you think, now how do you think about God's nature? You think like this. What nature does God have to have in order to be able to do these things? What nature does He have to have? What ability does He have to have? So He has to have the ability of all-knowing. He knows every person. He knows the hearts of people. He knows the inside of people. He knows everything about the person. And He can remember everything about the person. And He is a just God. So He will reward each one according to what He does. And He also repay each one according to what He does. If the person is good obeying God, then God sees that and God is very happy with the person and God will bless the person so that He can bless more people. But if people are living in sin, God doesn't like that. God is sad over the person and God can be angry with the person too. That God wants to discipline and punish this person so that he will repent. So that this person will be saved so that he will not lose salvation. So the nature of God, He, he knows His own knowing, He can remember everything and He will reward us. He, you know, he wants to reward us and He has compassion. He has compassion. He wants to forgive people. He wants to change people. He has the ability to change people. He has the ability to change people so that they will obey God. Now, so we want to think about what nature he has in order he can say these things that he's all knowing that he he will uh, he's just so he'll reward each person and or repay each person according to what he does and he has the ability to change people's life and he wants to change people's life he has the desire to change people's life okay and then his grace his grace is that He understands all people are sinners. Even after we are saved, we are still sinners. We still have the desire to, to sin. And He would put His Holy Spirit in us to change us so that we want to obey Him. He knows that it takes time for us to grow. And He, will, he is very patient. He is very patient to change our life so that we will grow and will change our life and obey God. He, so he is, he, is wise, he is a wise God. He is an able God. He can change us. And He can give us the desire to want to obey Him and to glorify Him. He's, because He is such a wonderful God. He is so holy and so wonderful. There is no one like Him. Everyone in the world have sinned. So we, we all fall short of the glory of God. But He wants to 
put His nature into us so that we won't sin, we won't fall into sin, we want to bless more people. So that is His grace. And He wants us the transfer, uh, the transferable grace that we want to help people also to be aware of God's judgment and God's seeing all people. So God wants us to see that. So this is a grace. We want to motivate people with God's nature and grace first. And God has the ability to change us so that we can uh, be honest and loving to people and kind to people and never tell lies. Okay, and that's why. Why do people hide from God? Now there are pastors who steal from the church and they think they can hide from God because some people don't take, doesn't take God seriously. When they fall into sin, they are, they are misled by the evil spirit. The evil spirit blinds the eyes so that they don't see the consequences. Many Christians don't see the consequences, consequences of their sin. So we want to teach people. God sees. So this message is very important. God sees. He just searches our minds and our hearts. Every single person in the church, he sees our heart. Right now, when we are listening to the message, God sees whether we are serious about obeying Him or we are thinking of sinning. So God knows our hearts. There is nothing hidden from Him. So um, there are people who, you know, the negative, uh, the reason why, because people think they can hide from God or they are... Uh, misled by the evil spirit, they are ch changed by the evil spirit. Now, some Christians, when they are converted, they are very zealous and happy. But after a while, they start to lose the motivation. They lose the joy. They lose the motivation to obey God. And then, uh, okay, how? A warning. If people keep their sins, God can discipline us and punish us or even kill us. You know, God has, God can use the choice to kill us, those who don't repent. Or God can wait until judgment. And this person could also lose salvation if he doesn't have any relationship with God at all. So that's the warning. How? How can we live with the sense? Now this message would have the theme of living with the awareness that everything in our life would be exposed to God. God sees everything. How do we live with the mentality that God sees everything in our life? That we live with them, uh, we remind ourselves, God sees me now. God is with me now. God sees my heart now. And if I sincerely love God, love God. God is very happy. Very simple. We just say, God, you're so wonderful. I love you. I obey you. Now, loving God doesn't mean you love God and then you turn, go outside and then steal money or hurt people or commit adultery. When we love God, we say, God is holy. I don't want to sin anymore. So, the how is first, thank God for changing my life. He changes my life. He give me a the Holy Spirit. He gave me a new life that I have the motivation to follow God. Thank you, Lord, that you have worked in my life in the past. You have done this in the past, that you have changed my life in the past. And I want to remember that. And I want to thank God for that. I want to obey God more and more. And I know that God will cease what I do. So I want to uh, obey God and glorify God and God will be very happy with me. So I'm I can be obeying God happily. Now that's very important. That we turn away from our sins happily because you know, we know that the sins are destructive. They are destructive. So we turn away from the sins happily. We say, I'm so happy I've turned away from my sins. I'm so happy that I'm obeying God and God is very happy with me. I'm happy that my life can be open to God and open to people and People and God will still say you are honest, sincere Christian. You know, that is a good feeling that we, now it's not pride. It's not saying, now I'm not perfect. But 
everything I know how to obey God, I do obey Him. I know that there's no way for me to run away from Him. So I sincerely want to obey Him in every way. When I mean I have sinned, I mean no one is perfect. Even when we do things, we serve people. Sometimes we have impatience. Sometimes we, we are lack of, in lack of love. So that's not perfect. That is still sin. That I admit that. I still have sins. I still have sinful thoughts. But I will stop those sinful thoughts as soon as possible. Instantly. So if I have any lust, immediately I want to stop it. I don't want the lust to stay in my mind. I don't want any negative thinking. I don't want any negative thinking toward people. I don't want any negative words toward people. I know that all these things are open to God. So first we thank God for His blessings. And then I know that everything I do, I think, I say, is open to God. And then I'm motivated by God's grace. Everything I do for God, God is very happy. So I'm happy to serve God more. I'm happy to obey God more. I'm happy to do, to obey Him more and follow Him more and glorify Him more because God is so wonderful. And then we want to examine too how we, sometimes we have ways we disobey God. We think we can hide from God. Why? Why? Because it's just foolishness or just forgetfulness. We're just foolish to think that we can run away from God or, or forgetfulness. We forget that God examines our life. So we want to repent of those sins and believing that God is with us all the time. So all day long, we should be aware of God's presence. We should be praising God and loving God and saying, God is so good. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I love you. I know that you are with me. And when I praise you, you are happy. When I glorify you, you are happy. When I help people, you are, help, you, are, you are happy. When I obey you, you are happy. I'm happy to be following you. I can enjoy my life all my lifetime. I enjoy God. I like God. I really enjoy being a Christian. And then have more time praising God. God will put this desire to be holy inside of us. And it's wonderful to be holy. When we live a holy life, it's wonderful because we feel peaceful. And we are blessing all the people sincerely. Even wicked people, we still are sincere. We still sincerely want to help them. But of course, we don't have to spend as much time for wicked sinners. Now, there are sinners who want to repent. We want to help them. But there are sinners who are not repentant. They always argue. They always fight. We don't have to continue to put so much time in them. It depends on the situation, how much time uh, we put in a person. But there are some people who want to follow God. We want to put more time with them. We want to help them more so that they will bear more fruit. So that's a wise way of using our life. So, but we still don't want to be angry with the sinners, with the wicked sinners. We don't want to be angry. It's their problem. I accept that. I accept that. They are, they are like that because we accept that people, now we all have sinful nature, but some people are controlled by their sinful nature very heavily. They are controlled by Satan very heavily and they cannot change. And we, we still continue to help them, but we depends on the response. If they are willing to change, we spend more time with them. But they are not willing to change them, we don't want to spend as much time. But every time I see them, I still remind them. So, so these are ways how we can live under the sun. Everything we do, we think, we say is under the sun. It's open to God and to everyone. Everything we do. For instance, our organization, Global Fire Missions Ministries. When people give offering, I always deposit the money into the bank and I send them the receipt, the picture of the receipt. Some people say, I trust you, Pastor Yip. I know that you will not take my money. But I say, this is my way of doing things. I don't want anyone to have any excuse to, to uh, attack me, to accuse me. So I will always send people the photocopy of the receipt that, uh, from the bank that I deposit uh, the offering to show people that I don't greet the money. Because if I greet for the money, 
it's a destruction to me. If I grieve the money, it's going to destroy my life. I will lose more. So there's no reason for me to greet for the money. I will say, you know, I just be faithful. God will provide for me. And I trust in God. God is so good. So I hope that today's training will help you realize that it's not so hard to follow this outline. And it's very helpful outline because it's a practical outline. Each point is related to the theme. That first you have the interpretation. We want to explain uh, the, the message in the passage. And we have negative and positive examples so that people see that not all Christians are obeying that. Actually, many Christians are not obeying that. So we let them know that the fact. We let them know not to accuse other people. We just let them know that it's a fact. So that's something we have to overcome. And then God's nature and grace to motivate people positively because God is so beautiful. God always, He Himself never tells lies. He always wants to bless people. Therefore, we want to be like Him too. We want to bless people. And how He has blessed us by changing our life, by working in our heart patiently. Now we, we can pray and think and ask God for wisdom, how to teach the teaching so that people can understand it well. So God is very patient with us. We have sinned many times, but God continue to move in our heart so that we will repent, so that we will uh, turn away from the sins. And God is very happy when we obey Him and He will reward us. And He will give us the ability to teach other people so that they will also obey God. And God is happy, more happy with us when we help other people to obey Him and do His will. And, and so God is more happy. And why? So we point out why. What are the reasons? Why do people still, why do Christians still commit adultery? Why do they still lie? Why do they still uh, gossip? Because sins are enticing. And the people around us are not all holy. The Christians are not all holy. So they would tempt other Christians to also uh, sin after them. And also we ourselves in the heart, we have anger toward people, we dislike people, we uh, despise people, therefore we have the sins. And then reminder and warning that any kind of sin will bring destruction. And how? So we want to break down the how to be practical. Uh, how to overcome the sins. Not just say, okay, don't lie anymore. Uh, tell the truth. You know, It doesn't tell people how to do it. The way to tell the truth, because we know that God is a holy God. He's an honest God. God never tell a lie, and God likes people who tell the truth. And when I tell the truth in love, God is very happy with me, and God will bless me. Therefore, I want to tell the truth. And also, I examine my life. Why do I want to tell lies? What are the reasons? Uh, sometimes people just want to boast. Sometimes people want to uh, uh, cover their sins. Sometimes people you know, just tell lies as a habit, whatever it is that we know, we discover our habit and then we want to change. We want to live a life that is pleasing to God and pleasing to people. And then we motivate ourselves and say, God likes this. God likes my life like this and God will bless me. And then we're happy uh, praising God and happy obeying God and glorifying God. So I hope that you see that this outline is not just an, um, you know, it's something God guided me to teach. Now, in the future, when you preach, you don't have to always follow these points, but the main points you must follow are God's nature and grace so that people see God. We don't just tell people what to do. Now, what I noticed that <coughs> some of the assignments, <coughs> they will start telling people what to do. That is, whenever we tell people what to do, that is the law. That is how. That is the how. That's the commandment. Okay, commandment belongs to the law. Grace, now I want to explain, grace is not just salvation grace. Some people think that's always grace, salvation grace, and they just talk about Jesus dying on the cross for us. It's not just that. It's God changing our life, working 
uh, with the Holy Spirit to change our life, and He gives us His Word to teach us, and He molds us, and He is patient with us, and He guides us, and He gives us good examples of people to help us to change. So God uses many different ways to help us to change. That is His grace. So we want to motivate people with God's nature and grace. And when we talk about God's nature and grace, it's always start with God. God is holy. God is loving. God is kind. God is patient. God gives us the Holy Spirit. God moves in our heart. God changes our life. It's always start with God. He is the one who is doing the action. So we want to preach in a way that people see God and hear God and say, "Wow, God is so beautiful! I want to follow Him. I want to obey Him. I want to love Him. Uh, God is so wonderful. God is so beautiful. I want to follow Him all the days of my life." So that is holiness. That is how we follow God, and that is, you know, that we want. Tip people to know God, that God is wonderful. We don't just tell people, don't lie, don't, don't commit adultery, don't sin. If not, God will punish you. That is just motivation by the law. That is just like police officer yelling at people, don't do this, don't do that. If not, I'll beat you. That so that's just the law motivation. We want to motivate people with God's nature and grace, and we motivate ourselves with God nature, God's nature and grace too. God is loving. God is kind. God is holy. He wants us to live a holy life, and when we live a holy life, He's very, very happy, and He has moved our heart. He has worked in our heart so much. He changed our heart so that we want to obey Him. He He has done so much work in our life so that our life is changed. So we thank God for His. Work in our life so that our life is changed. We thank God for His wonderful nature and His grace, how He works. So, we think about when we think about God's nature is what God has to have His nature in order to, that He can do these wonderful things, and what grace, what action does He have to have, what mentality does He have to have in order to change our life. He has a mentality of blessing us, helping us, loving us, be patient with us, and rewarding us. So the more we see God's goodness, the more we like Him, and then we want to teach our members so that they all like God. When people like God, they want to obey God. They naturally want to obey God. But if we just tell people, "Don't do this," and you have to obey, obey, and then when they turn, when we turn around, they will continue sin. We want to motivate people so that the motivation is continuous. When they understand God sees their life, God is happy whenever they obey Him. Then they see. God sees the life all the time. Then they have the motivation to obey God, and they would not think of God as someone who is, you know, fearful. But he is, uh, uh, he is, he think of God as someone loving, someone kind, someone good. He will bless me when I follow Him. So that way, even when you turn around, they will continue to do good. When no one sees them, they will continue to do good because they know that God knows the. The good deeds and God will reward them. So that's the motivation from God's grace. So that the motivation will be continuous. Now God just gave me this point, so that the motivation will be continuous. Motivation by the law. Sometimes some preachers they will yell at people. You go to hell. God doesn't like you. God hates you. God beats you up, and you punish. And and then the people oh they 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 feel sorry, uh, but then they turn around. Two days later, they will forget about it, and they will just continue sin. But if we let them know God sees your whole life, God cares about you. You are precious, even though your family members, your friends, doesn't look up to you. Don't think that you are good. They despise you, but God never despises you. He never despises you. He always treasures you. He wants to lift your weight, your life, up to a high level. When you obey Him and love Him. And serve him. He is very, very happy, and for sure, he will bless your whole life. So that's how we motivate people with God's nature and grace, and this will this will stay in a life forever. If they really believe that, they will stay strong all the time. They want to obey God all the time. They want to follow God all the time. Okay, God bless you all, and I hope you do your assignments. It will be for your good, and I hope that you will be able to preach this naturally. 
because you're so filled with God's nature and grace that you want to preach naturally and tell people how good God is. Okay, let us pray. And you can stand up. When you stand up and pray, sometimes you can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. Oh, Father, you're so wonderful. You're full of mercy and grace and kindness and goodness and holiness. Everything about you is beautiful, God. Everything about you is beautiful. You are a beautiful God. You are a holy God. We love you. We adore you. We desire you. We want to live for you. We want to glorify you. We want to let people know about your goodness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. We want to follow you and glorify you. We want to obey you. We want to put you in the first place in our life, and you'll be very happy, and you for sure will bless us. Lord, help us to motivate people with God's nature and grace to change people's lives so that they willingly want to obey God, so that they would have a long-term motivation to obey you and serve you and love people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, God bless you. And I hope that you can apply what we talk about. And if you have any questions, please send to me in the leaders group. Okay, the leaders group. Remember, the leaders group is for communication. The photos group is just for the photos. The leaders group is for asking questions, for reporting your presence, and for uh, asking questions and discussion. We can discuss about different topics if you have any, any uh, questions. And also you can give suggestions of what I teach. Actually, I have a lot of teaching. But I want to dwell on this so that you understand this way of writing sermons so that you, you preaching would change people. People would be motivated from the inside to obey God, not forced to obey God, okay? God bless you.